We come now to a question from a listener in Ontario, California, and she writes, One thing that sometimes bothers me is in the Old Testament, the law says, You shall not kill. Yet so many of God's people were commanded to kill and sometimes utterly destroy a city or people. Can you help me understand this issue? May I say that the scripture says, Thou shalt not kill. And that has to do, of course, with a personal feud or the expression of our personal feelings and that sort of thing. But when God told the nation to destroy, they were to act as judges. It was not because they had any personal feeling about it at all that they were to act as judges in the matter. In other words, they were carrying out the judgment, actually, of God in the matter, to execute God's judgment upon a godless nation and people. And if you'll notice, it's always upon a godless nation and people and those who've had ample opportunity to turn to God, if you please. So that thought always is that when God gives a nation or a people an opportunity to hear about him and to make a decision, and they continue on in their sinful ways. And it's generally very sinful people, like the Canaanites, the Amorites, and Edomites, all of those living in awful, unspeakable sin. And they had an opportunity to turn to God. They refused it, and then they were judged, you see. And the nation Israel executed that judgment. Now, may I say that that will throw a great deal of light on this question of service in the army for a young man. I had a mother and her son, very lovely people. When I was pastor in Pasadena during the World War II, they came to me, and the whole question was, should the boy, he was being drafted, should he go? Or should he take the position, which they were reluctant to do, that he would not fight? Their thought was, and her point was, and she says, it's not right, she said, and it's contrary to the Bible for him to go out and kill men that he hasn't even seen, and he does not hate them at all personally. And I said to her, that's the whole point. If he hated them personally, and went out and did it, then he'd be dead wrong, because that would be murder indeed. But he is to take the position, as I see it, that war has come on a nation because of many things that was forced on our nation. We had to enter, and it was upon a godless people we felt, that is, that our cause was just and theirs was not, and we're executing judgment. Now, that is the position, by the way, and should be the position. I personally do not go along with this false patriotism that says my country right or wrong, but my country either right or wrong. Well, I say no. My country right, my country, may she always be right. That's the important thing. And when we feel, and I said, now, if you feel like this war is a just war, one that's been forced upon us, that we're not carrying on an aggressive war, but actually a defensive war, we've been attacked, and we're attempting to bring justice into the world and peace into the world. If you feel that is true, then you can enter it, and it will not be a non-Christian position, and certainly not an unbiblical position. And they saw that point, and the boy did enter, and he never shot an enemy because he never got out of this country. He was pretty good, I think, at electronics or something like that, and they kept him in this country training, I think in radar, something like that. But he did have a part. I think today they are very happy that it worked out as it did.